Welcome everybody, Chris Record here with another 90 day challenge day of training. Today is day five and the topic is going to be Facebook advertising for beginners. We're going to go through some step by step training. Again, we are broadcasting live in the Facebook group. So if you guys are in the Facebook group right now, let's go ahead and uh, let's get you going. Hold on, let me go ahead and find this here in the background. If you're in the 90 day challenge group, you'll basically start coming on live. We just posted live right now. So you should be able to see us. We are here. You can see people are starting to just now jump on. Um, I'm sure we'll get to the point where there's hundreds of us joining. So as soon as you jump on live, make sure that you comment. Let me know how's the audio and how's the video. And of course, if audio's there, you've got a little volume button. You've got to click on the video if you can't hear it. Click and open it up full screen if you can. And let's go with that. Okay. We are excited about today's training because Facebook advertising is something that we all really want to learn. Um, it's like one of those things that it's, it's difficult to crack the code, but when you do, it's so worth it, okay? So uh, let's just start typing and let's start getting everybody going. So Facebook advertising, um, let's just say, let's, I want to I be like straightforward with you, okay? Facebook advertising can be tough, okay? Let's just start with that. Um, the reason is because when we are new, it's difficult to place ads that generate a profit. Therefore, we are ultimately losing money <laughs> while we are learning this strategy, okay? So, you know, who wants to lose money? Nobody, which makes it very tough, okay? That's the main, that's really the main thing there. This is what really this, this is what discourages people, okay? Um, when I first started with Facebook ads, there wasn't much training available online. There weren't very many mentors or people that were offering help. You all have a significant advantage over us from when we first started, okay? You need to understand this, okay? You all have a huge, significant advantage, right? Um, now, there are many um, opportunities to learn from very successful advertisers. There are blog posts, YouTube videos, Facebook groups, um, there are, you know, digital courses, boot camps, conferences, you know, you name it. Uh, not much of that existed several years ago when we first got started, okay? So it's important for you to understand that because um, when I first started, I lost my first $2,000 that I invested into ads. Then, I almost gave up. But instead, I decided to get help and get training. And then, I was able to flip my next 1000 in ad spend into over 10000 in revenues. From there, I started scaling like crazy, and I've never looked back. Now, the reason I'm telling you my story, and the reason I'm writing up so you can read it later, the reason I'm telling you my story is because, you know, look, I lost money, and I basically was ready to give up. I mean, I lost $2,000. I was done, you know? Like, I didn't have more money. I didn't have money at that time. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't balling out with tons of money I could have spent on advertising, and it was gone. That's like $2,000. I could have bought a car with it. You know, that's money I could have paid bills with. So much stuff, and instead it just disappeared like in a fireplace, basically. And that can crush you. But instead of giving up, I just kept going. And you know, now I, I never looked back. Um, I'm so glad I did. So it's, it's a tough look. Facebook advertising can be tough. That's how I'm starting this off. I know a lot of you would rather hear Facebook advertising is so simple, we're all gonna get rich. That's what we wanna hear. But I'm just gonna shoot it to you straight. You know, this is, um, you know, let's, let me just, let's like, let's, let's write that. Let's be real. It's a tough code to crack. 
But for those of you that crack it, you can literally place ads and go to sleep and have profits when you wake up. <laughs> like, like, literally, if or when you crack the code, your entire life and business will change. That alone, in my opinion, makes it all worth it, okay? It's just worth it, just go for it. You know, like, you don't have to lose $2,000 like I did. Now, we're gonna talk about, um, you know, we're gonna talk about some reasons why most people lose money and how they can reduce that. We can talk about that. We could really, we could really kind of go into some of the reasons why, and we can cover that. But the majority of what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give a basic step-by-step -step explanation of kind of how to get started, what things are, where to go around in your Facebook ads account, and I'm going to pretend, you know, today's training will focus on beginners who might not even, who might have never even placed an ad. And so if some of you have placed ads, you got a head start, but sometimes beginner training is good because you might be missing something, you might be doing something wrong, or maybe you don't even understand something. And you're just taking action, and you don't even really understand what you're doing. So that's why today's training is going to help. So for this one right here, um, I'm going to put, uh, we will come back to this later. Okay. So. You guys ready? Who's excited? Who's ready? Let me know in the comments. Who's excited and who's ready to dive into Facebook ads live? Um, let them know we're live. You can post the post the link there. We're live now. Who's excited? Let me know in the comments. Who's ready? Let's go here so I can read some comments. Who's ready? Who's excited? Who's ready to jump on side of this, right? Boom, boom, boom. Um, so let me know in the comments right now if you guys are beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Type the word, type the word, you know, like beginner if you feel you're a beginner at Facebook ads type the word intermediate if you're intermediate and type the word advanced if you feel like you really know your way around it's not so much how much money you're making let's just talk about beginner intermediate or advanced based on your current knowledge based on what you know about Facebook ads I'd love to kind of get a pulse for everybody in here okay look beginner 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 intermediate 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 beginner Starting to kind of come in. I've dumped a lot of money to ads, but still feel like a beginner. Beginner, beginner, beginner. Beginner, beginner. So obviously, like, I would say like 90% beginners and 10% intermediate. And maybe maybe 80, 20. 80% beginners, 20% intermediate. Not many advanced, though. Okay. So let's go. Um, let's go with some. Let's go with some uh, focus. Okay. Start here. Okay, you guys ready? Start here. It's going to seem simple. Google. Start here. Google. Search Facebook ads. Find Facebook help section. Okay. Remember, there wasn't many people doing this when I first got started, so here's what I did. Go to Google. Search the word Facebook ads. Skip the actual ads. See how this one's an ad, that one's an ad, that one's an ad. Skip those. And then you got three. There's like right off the bat, there's three sections here. Advertising on Facebook. How Facebook ads work. Facebook business, marketing on Facebook, um, you know, fa about Facebook ads, beginner's guide to advertising on Facebook, uh, beginner's guide to Facebook advertising here. Listen, start here. You guys, um, if you're not learning how to be able to go grab free information that exists, um, what you're going to do is you're going to be in the waiting game. You're always going to wait for some guru or something to teach you. You know, you're not going to be able to move at your own speed. So first things first, you have to learn how to be able to move at a fast pace. The way you're going to move at a fast pace is going to be to literally to learn how to go and dig up research yourself. You're going to have to learn, you know, I love going to the source. So look at all these are like Facebook's actual business section. I love going to the source. To me, this is the best way to get started. So let's spend like two minutes and let's kind of look through here. Facebook.com slash business. Go there and, you know, just kind of review this, you know, look, Look at the page, you know, they've got some articles, you know, you can basically, you can basically, um, you know, learn how to use Boomerang by Instagram to create business content. There's just cool stuff. Now, it's all corporate. It's not going to be as fun as the marketing angles we teach, you know, it's definitely not going to replace them, 
because these guys aren't going to teach marketing angles, but it's still valuable. You can kind of learn, you can kind of like, like just kind of like learn all, you kind of like just start to read stuff and start to start to understand stuff, you know? You, you've got all of this stuff here, right? All I did was went to marketing on Facebook and like look at this, you got getting started with ads, buying Facebook ads, ad formats, ad placements, choosing your audience, managing your ads. So this is going to give you like that baseline foundation, okay? So like you're going to go here to ad formats and it's going to basically give you like, you know, the different types, you know, you got photo ads, you got video ads, you got carousel ads, slideshow ads, canvas ads, collection ads, and it's kind of like showing you lead ads, dynamic ads, link ads. You know, it, it kind of like gives you like a basic thing and you might go, okay, I want to learn about how to get leads, okay? Well, they, they, it kind of tells you. Now, it's really corporate and you're going to, you know, a lot of people just get lost here. They feel like it's just a waste, but, you know, there'll, there'll be stuff that's, um, you know, our blueprint e-learning course. There's just, you just got... What I do is I guide through this stuff really fast. I go in here and I just kind of go really fast and I just look for like a basic understanding. Okay, so like I'll give you an example. Um, you can, like right off the bat, here's a baseline understanding. I can show my ads on Facebook, I can show my ads on Instagram, and I can show my ads to their audience network. Okay, there's three basic, basic things right there. So if that's all I got from this page, I get a basic understanding. Facebook ads, I can place them on Facebook, Instagram, audience network. So anyways, go through here on your own. And you'll start to kind of learn, you know, all this different stuff, you know, you'll start to kind of get a basic, a baseline overview. Okay, that's what Google's going to help you do. Now, don't spend hours and hours and hours because they, they don't really know, you know, like, let's do how Facebook ads work. They don't really understand, like, what we do. So they, they won't be able to help you. But, like, look at this. Choose your objective. Okay, so this kind of walks you through, you know, like, look, look, step one, choose your objective. Step two, select your audience. And step three, decide where you want your ad to run. And step four, select your budget. Step five, pick the format of your ad. And then step six, measure all your results. So like there's a, there's a quick six step system. So like as simple as it is, that's what I understand, okay? I go through and I got a basic six, so let's review these six steps from Facebook. When you're placing ads, one, you're gonna choose your objective. What type of ad are you gonna be? Is it gonna be a video ad, a picture ad, whatever? Number two, select your audience. Like, who do you want to see it? I want women ages 25 to 35 living in Arizona who like entrepreneurship. Decide where to run my ad. I want it to either run on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Set my budget. I want to spend $5 a day. Uh, pick a format. I want it to be a, a photo ad. And place my order. Then step six, I'm going to measure and manage my ad. I want to go and see if I'm getting any results. And then look, they even tell you when you measure your ad, there's three different ways you could do it. They have three different sections. You can measure it in ads manager, power editor, or business manager. So this is a basic overview of where to go to get information. Once you learn this, trust me, it's like when you learn, when you learn how to be fast and when you learn how to go through and, and go to Facebook itself, go to the source, they're not going to teach you strategy, but they'll give you a high level understanding of what things are. So that's what I want to do today. I want to fill in the gap on a high level understanding for beginners of what all this stuff is and try to make some sense out of it so that you guys feel comfortable inside your Facebook ads account. But if there's anything that's over your head, you know you could always go back here and you can always look at this, okay? So that being said, here we go, okay? Here is a high level overview of Facebook ads for beginners, okay? First things first, you got to go set up a Facebook ads account. So inside of your um, Facebook account, when you're logged in, you can click up here on the top right. There's a little arrow. It's easier if you do this from desktop than from mobile. There's a little um, arrow, and you'll notice you have these business manager accounts. We'll come back to that. Okay, this is all Facebook ads. The main thing you're going to want to do is go in there and actually create an ads account. Now, a little simple way to go there is go facebook.com slash business. Facebook.com slash business. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to put little bullet points. Create a Facebook ads account at facebook.com slash business. Okay. Start there. Start with something really simple. You basically, I already have a Facebook ad account, so it's going to say create an ad. But you're going to basically go in here and you're going to create an ad and you're going to start placing, um, you're going to go in and you're going to start doing this, right? So once you create your ads account, then it's going to let you go in and create an ad. Okay, so let's put that in. Um, next, create your first Facebook ad, okay, in your 
ads account. And now we're, it defaults you to what's called ads manager. Now, there are three, three sections to manage your Facebook ads account. Okay, there's three sections. One, ads manager. Two, power editor. Three, business manager. Okay, those are the three sections, right? So right here you can see up on the top left it tells you where you are. I'm in ads manager. So your top left, when you're inside your ads account, your top left up here is what's gonna help you navigate your account. So you can click this and it's gonna give you your frequently used things, but then you're gonna hold over all tools. Now this, this top navigation is basically gonna walk you through everything, okay? This is gonna show you, this is just your frequently used, but over here it's gonna show you how to plan your ads, okay? You can basically do research right here. How to create your ads. Look, you can use business manager, ads manager, or power editor. Those are your three main sections. But they also have the section you can make posts. Um, and I do use that. And maybe we'll cover that, maybe we won't. But these are the three main sections. Business manager, ads manager, power editor. Okay, these are the three sections you need to know. We're gonna talk about these. And this is where you're gonna create and manage. Look, there's even help. <clears throat> okay, measure. Okay, after, after you create ads, you need to see if they're working. This is where you're gonna go into your ads reporting. Assets, this is where you're gonna start creating things. Like, um, you're gonna create a Facebook pixel here. Um, you're gonna create an audience. If you wanna save an audience for later, you can save it. Like, you can basically say, I always wanna target you know, women 35 to 55 who love country music. You can save an audience that you can always, just with one click, you can, it can remember that audience for you. You can save images you want to use for your ads. You can save all the stuff, okay? And then settings, this is where you're going to go, like, figure out your payment options and your billing and stuff like that, okay? So this is, your, this is really, like, your basic Facebook advertising navigation up here. It's not complicated at all. Out of all these, all I really use out of all these on a day-to-day -day basis is Ads Manager and Power Editor on a day-to-day -day basis I'm, I'm, and, and ads reporting. So if you really want to get, like, a, just a, a hot spot, on a day-to-day -day basis, when you log in, I'm, I'm really ever only going to like ads manager and power editor to place ads and then ads reporting. That's really it. Those are the three sections I use the most. Let's, let's put those down. Um, there are three main sections um, to do that. The three areas of, of a Facebook ads account that I spend 90% of my time are, and let's look at that, it's, it's basically um, ads reporting, ads manager, power editor. And I'll explain to you kind of what I do. So when I, when I go in here and I place an ad, right now I'm gonna place an ad, I'm just gonna place one to something live right on the spot so you guys can kind of see this. When I place an ad, then afterwards I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna go over here and like tomorrow or whatever, I'm gonna wanna log in and see if, if it got any clicks or if it got any sales or if anything happened, right? So obviously, Ads Manager and Ads Reporting are the two main sections you're going to use. The reason I use Power Editor is because Power Editor lets you work on all your ads a lot. So Power Editor is like, if you have like more than a few ads, you're going to need to you're going to need something where you can like manage all your ads all at one all at once. You know, like I might want to pause 20 ads at one time, or I might want to duplicate 20 ads, or I might want to change. The, the billing amount on 20 ads. That's kind of like your power editor. That's the word power. It allows, like a bulk editor. It allows you to basically just save time. You know, that's kind of what that is. So all these other things, you don't really need to get overwhelmed by them all. And you know, you know what's crazy is that we've done millions of dollars and I don't even know all this stuff. So don't worry about like being overwhelmed as a beginner. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with Ads Manager. That's where we are right now, and I'm going to walk through uh, the basics. So we're going to talk on a very high-level overview of, of some basics about Facebook ads. Okay, let's start over here. So now that you understand this top navigation, let's start over here on the left. There's three sections here. One section is your campaign. The next section is your ad set, and the next section is your ads. Okay? Um, campaign, um, ad set, and ads. Campaign, ad set, and ads. So... What you're essentially looking to do is just looking to understand the, uh, the difference between those. Okay, let me, let me go back here to my, my thing, make sure that I'm getting good comments. Okay. What you're really looking to do is understand, let's, get, let's talk on a high level, understand the difference between these. Okay. Campaigns. What campaigns are is 
is where you basically, for whatever objective you're trying to achieve with your Facebook ads, okay, such as I want to get more website clicks, or I want to make more sales of my product, or I want to generate more leads, or I want to get more views on my video, or I want to get more likes on a post, whatever the, your objective is, like what are you trying to do? You need to create a new campaign for each objective, okay? So let's say that like engagement, let's say you say I want to get more likes, comments, and shares on my post, okay? You would place an engagement ad. You would try to get more engagement. You would click on this and then you would tell Facebook what type of engagement you're trying to get and on that one you would do post engagement, okay? So literally you would tell, you would tell, you would go to Facebook and you say, okay, what I'm trying to do is this, okay? That's what a campaign is. A campaign is basically you're telling Facebook what you're trying to do. Now, you can only have one objective per campaign. So if you want to start out getting a bunch of likes on your post, if you came to me and said, Chris, I want to change that to try to get a bunch of sales. Well, you can't. You would have to create a new campaign. A new campaign that says, now my new campaign is I want to get a bunch of conversions. I want to get a bunch of sales. So essentially that's what a campaign is. A campaign has one objective. You've got only got one objective per campaign. So one campaign might be, okay, I'm going to try to get video views. Another campaign might be, I'm going to try to get a bunch of likes and shares and comments. And another campaign might be, I'm going to try to get a bunch of sales. These are different campaigns. Okay, that's what a campaign is. So you cannot place an ad without a campaign. You have to tell Facebook what you're trying to do and you can't change it later. You can pause it, you can delete it, you can stop it, but if you want to change it, you have to create a new campaign. Does that make sense? Say yes. If that makes sense, if it, say yes, I understand campaigns, okay? If, say it in the comments. Say yes, I understand campaigns. Yes, I understand campaigns. Okay, so now that you understand what a campaign is, Inside of a campaign, we have to choose an objective. We have to choose what we want. So I'm going to quickly run through each of these objectives to try to help you understand um, which one might be a good fit for what you're trying to do. Okay, so they broke them into three categories, but that doesn't really help. Um, out of all of the things here, the only objectives I really use are conversions, engagement, and video views. Okay, my top three. Okay, so let's, let's go over here and let's say... Um, Choose your campaign objective. Okay, that's the next thing you want to do. Um, my top three objectives I use are engagement, conversions, and video views. That's Those are my top three. Okay, engagement, conversions, and video views. So you don't have to be a master. Like app installs. Well, how many of you are going to develop a Facebook app? Probably like none of you. So don't even worry about this. You know, lead generation, I do have some lead generation ads running, but it's like, at the end of the day, that's a different type of thing you're trying to do. Um, product catalog, yes, we do have some product catalog. That's like, there's a way to be able to set that up that's really cool, but that's, the, that's intermediate to advanced. That's not, you're not going to deal with that today, so don't even worry about it. Um, store visits, well, we're not doing a traditional store. Brand awareness, we're not doing branding. Local awareness, no, we're trying to sell to everybody, not to people in a local city. Reach, no. Traffic. Yes, we want traffic, but we're if we're going to get it, we'd rather we're selling stuff with Shopify. So, we don't want just a bunch of visitors to come to our site. We don't want we want conversions. So, we want actual conversion conversions. So, the reason I'll do video views is cuz sometimes I want a video to go viral, so I do a lot of that. And the reason I do engagement is that I want to post or, you know, to get a lot of social proof on it. And the reason I do conversions is cuz I want to make money from it. Those are the three that I do the most. So, let's choose engagement right here and let's just do um, campaign name. Now with a campaign name, I use a na I, I do what's called a naming convention. I like all my ad I like all my ads to be able to have like a like a very easy to understand naming convention. You can do whatever you want, but what I usually do is I usually do like two things in the in the title so I can really easily see the campaign name. One is like what what type of post um, is it? You know, like, what am I running the ad to? And then the other one is like, what type of audience? And I might even put, if it's like video views, I might put video views. So it'll go something like this. Let's say I want to advertise. Right now, I just loaded in a, um, a rap video. So maybe we'll, we'll start with that. I just loaded in, in over here on my personal fan page. Over here. And yeah, we'll do this in real time right now. On my personal fan page, I just loaded up this video right here. One hour ago. Here's a sneak peek at my next rap music video called Life of an Entrepreneur. 
So this is a music video and I want to get some views to it, right? It's got 1.3 thousand views. I just launched it. I want to get this to like 100,000 views. Okay, so my objective is I want to get some views to it. So I can either do video views or I can do engagement. I just want to do engagement though because my objective is I want to get a lot more likes and shares and comments. I want this, this post to be buzzing. So right here, my objective is I want to get this video a bunch of engagement. Okay, so I have to first, I have to name what type of post is this. Next, what is my, um, and then next, what audience am I advertising to? So let's go over here and let's call this post, it's called Life of an Entrepreneur, so let me shorten it. L-O-E Rap Trailer. Let's just call it L-O-E Rap Trailer because that's what I'm advertising. And then the second part is my audience that I'm going to advertise. And let's say that I want to advertise to um, influencers. I want to advertise to people that like, you know, Grant Cardone and Ty Lopez and stuff like that because this, this video has like a jet on it. You know, I want to advertise like successful influencers. Their audiences might enjoy this. So I'm going to go over here my, and I'm going to put influencers. Okay, just on a very simple lake. My campaign name is Life of an Entrepreneur Rap Trailer and then I'm going to target influencers. Now, you don't have to. I could just do Life of an Entrepreneur Rap Trailer. So whatever, you gotta have a name. So I've chosen, a, I've, I've got a campaign, I've chosen a, an objective, which is engagement, and then I've given it a name. Okay, continue. Okay, now we're on section two, ad set. This has three sections, your audience, your placements, and your schedule. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna tell Facebook, who do you want to see the ad? You're gonna tell Facebook, where do you want the ad to be placed? And then you're gonna tell Facebook, here's how much of a budget I wanna spend on this, okay? These three things, what we're gonna do right now. So. When I come in here to my audience, I've got two things I can do right off the bat. I can create a new audience or I can use a saved audience. Okay, so if you're, if you're, if you're going to advertise the same audience a lot, you might want to like, after you create all this, there's going to be a little button down here to save it. So once we create all this, I can press save this audience and I can name it. Okay, so this, this is kind of what you can do. And, and by the way, I just realized I'm in, a, I'm in a, an account. I want to go over here to this test account real quick. I'm going to start over real quick. I want to go to a different account. Um, I'm in some old I'm in some old account that I don't want to mess with. So I'm gonna basically um, start over. Hold on, academics. Let me get into. I don't know why it's not letting me get into this tech academics account. I want to go to my uh, test account, tech academics training. There we go. Um, start over. Okay. So again, just starting over real quick. Engagement, and I'll do uh, L O E rap trailer influencers. Okay. I'm right back where I was. I just realized I was in a different, I have a bunch of Facebook ads account. I want to be in our test account because I don't want to actually place ads that um, I forget about for like months. Okay, so there's two options. I can create a new one or I can use a saved one. You can see I've got a bunch of saved audiences in here, you know, tons and tons, you know, whatever it is, like e-commerce platforms, personal development audiences, direct selling, internet marketing, golf audiences for golf niches we go into. So we, I just have tons and tons and tons of them. So when you, when you create an audience, you can go down here and you can save it if you want, okay? Um, let's start by creating new. Custom audiences. This would be if like, if you want to like retarget people that have visited your website or if you want to upload a customer list or um, if you want to target to like some sort of custom thing, um, like you can create a new one right here. So like you can create a new custom audience. You could upload a file of all your customers. Um, you can put a Facebook pixel on your website and you can retarget everybody that visits your website. You can actually um, advertise to everybody who like comments and shares on your, on, your, on your posts on Facebook. There's a lot of stuff you could do. That's more intermediate level. All this custom audience stuff is more intermediate. Let's skip that. What we want to do is we want to focus on creating basic ads to basic audiences so you all have, you're all comfortable. We want to make it as comfortable as possible. So you chose an objective. Let's just choose a basic audience. Locations. United States. So if you're selling... If your Shopify store is selling to people in the United States, that's the audience you want. Okay, so most of you are going to have United States as your audience. But depending on what you're trying to do, um, if you're selling something like, an, like something that could be sold to people all over the world, you might want to change that. So here's some basic things you could do. If you wanted to also target people in like the United Kingdom, you would start typing it in and then you would select it. So now you have two countries you're, you're targeting. And if I wanted, I could even make it like Australia. I could do like New Zealand. Um, and I could do, you choose the country. And then I could choose like Canada. And there's like five, for example, English-speaking countries that have credit cards that are likely buyers. 
But if I'm only really shipping my products to the United States, then I'm just going to target the United States. So I usually use um, three types of I use I use when I'm targeting people in different locations. Um, I actually have three types of things I do. So we'll talk about this. ad sets, create an ad set, and create an audience. Okay, um, create your campaign. Okay, next one is create an ad set and choose your audience. Um, and then what I uh, my top three audiences uh, I use are okay. Number one is going to be United States. Let's say my top three. Um, countries I use are number one United States number two is big five what I call big five which is USA United Kingdom Australia New Zealand and uh, Canada those are my those are my um, is it AU? Oh, yes, I don't know. these are my um, these are my five my big five is the United States United Kingdom Australia New Zealand and Canada I, I'll target them a lot. If I've got something that I want to be able to sell a little bit more worldwide, those are great audiences, do a lot of business. And then the last one I'll do is worldwide, where I literally target everybody. Okay? So I'll either get laser focused, United States, if I'm only sh selling and shipping there. Big five is what I call big five if I'm actually going to start, um, if I want to get some international reach and some international exposure. And then worldwide if I want to go all the way. So when we go back here, this is an example of what I would call big five. Now, if I wanted to go worldwide, I would just type in the word worldwide, all one word, and this region comes up, worldwide region. You choose that, it'll override everything. And now my ads are going to worldwide. Okay, so this worldwide right here, look at this, potential reach 1.7 billion people. So right now I could place an ad and reach 1.7 billion people. Now I don't want to because that's too many people. Uh, that would cost me too much money and that's too generic. So. Literally, that's what Facebook's working with. So when you, if I was to change that to just the United States, instead of being able to target 1.7 billion people, there's 215 million. Way different, right? So those are the big, those are the ones that I do. Okay, so that's locations. Okay, now let's go down to age and gender. Okay, the basic rule of thumb with age is you're selling something. So since you're selling something, you're probably going to want people at least 21 years and older because they gotta like have credit cards and they gotta be buyers. That's a general rule of thumb when you're doing e-commerce is 21 and older. If you're just trying to get people to watch a video like I am, you know, who cares? Do whatever you wanna do. But if you're trying to get people to actually buy something, you're probably gonna wanna do 21 and older. Um, if any, and, and obviously use common sense with age. If you're selling something that's like for moms, you know, then there's not gonna be as many moms at age 21. Okay, so you got to start using kind of like common sense. You might want to start in your 30s if you're targeting parents or, you know, if you're targeting things that like, an, you, that you got to like, you got to ask yourself, what is the most likely age for this? Okay, so there's 200 million people in the United States between uh, 21 to 65 years old or 65 plus. Okay, that's age. Gender, you're either going to do men and women or you're going to just do men. Now there's 200 million, there's 92 million or women, there's 106 million. So there's more women on Facebook than there are men. So women, 106 million accounts, men, um, 92 million accounts that we can advertise to, 21 and over. Now another thing, if you're advertising anything alcohol related or anything of any concern whatsoever, make sure you have 21 year, years and older. This is just a, a general rule of thumb that's good. It's just getting you a better audience anyways. Okay, so if your product isn't niche specific, then just choose all. Languages, don't worry about that because you're targeting English speaking anyways. Um, this part here is where we're going to go in and put in all of our keywords. This is like the detailed targeting is like the main part. And then connections is not really relevant. You're going to skip this section. Um, you know, you, you're, this is like if you have like a big fan page, you could, you could run one ad to your existing fans and you could run another ad to make sure that you're targeting people who are not your fans yet. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. Skip this. Just don't even bother with this. Okay. So let's go in here. And let's choose uh, targets. Okay, remember I said I was going to do influencers. Okay, so I've already done this in a previous ad. So what I'll do is I'll look and I'll kind of go, okay, who are some top influencers that their audience might want to watch this video? Okay, so you saw Ty Lopez popped up. I'm going to do Ty Lopez. And right about you can see this information over here. When I hover over, it's so right here, Ty Lopez. As I start talk, as I start typing, 
it's going to kind of auto populate. So I'm going to see, okay, here's Ty Lopez. Over here is going to say what type of audience it is. You guys are pretty much going to want to focus on interests, okay? Interests are the ones that are cheaper to advertise to. So a lot of you, if you guys start advertising to things like behaviors or employers or jobs or stuff like that, your ads are going to cost a lot more, okay? Focus on interests. Start with interest. This is what you want. You want it has to say interests. Once you become intermediate, you can do more audiences. But until you're until you're actually making money, focus on interests. Don't don't go with the other one. So Ty Lopez, interests, and then this gives me a snapshot that there's 3.8 million people in the world that that have an interest in Ty Lopez. Three an, an interest in maybe a page having to do with him or the keyword or whatever. Facebook has built an audience based on something. We don't really know how Facebook has this information, but we're just assuming Facebook, you know, grabbed it from something. So 3.8 million people worldwide, that does not mean, see I'm targeting the United States, so that does not mean this is gonna show to 3.8 million. So let's choose it, okay? Out of those 3.8 million um, that it can target, look what it did, it did potential reach 13 million. So even though it says 3.8 million, this reach is gonna be very, very, very different. And that's the thing that confuses most beginners. And what I do is I say, my advice is don't worry about it, okay? This is, this is just don't worry about it. What you wanna do is just focus on getting the right interests in here and focus on getting this number here to, to be relatively where you want it to be. Now I'm gonna give you some examples right now of your potential reach audience size, okay? Um, next, uh, you know, choose, and, and we're gonna, you know, you're choosing, you're choosing basically this stuff here. Choose your audience. So the age, the gender, the location, everything is called your audience. Okay, next, choose your audience um, and get the right size. Okay, let me give you some, some gu guidelines here. Um, my top um, recommendations are, okay, um, if you're trying to do viral video views, okay, Audience, um, this, I'm, not, I'm gonna use the exact words they're using. Potential reach, okay, if you're trying to do uh, these, put viral video views, potential reach equals, let's say two million to 10 million, okay, plus. Is that's what size you want it if you're trying to get viral video views, if you're trying to get cheap, you know, um, low cost video views. So if, if, if all I want, is to run an ad to this video right here and get a lot of views, then what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm going to want to um, run it just straight to this audience. Look, millions of people, okay? So that's kind of what you wanna do is you wanna run an ad to millions of people because you're gonna get rewarded with low cost engagement. But if I want those ads to convert, then that 13 million person audience is too big. It's too generic. So I'm looking for viral video views. I want a big audience. Okay, um, if I'm looking for, let's say, um, if I'm looking for, uh, let's say, post, good post engagement, okay, then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually just gonna do the reach to make this a little smaller. You know, I'm gonna put the reach at maybe like one million to two million. And then if I'm looking to, um, to sell a Shopify product directly, for reach, then I'm gonna look at, you know, like 200,000 to 800,000. Okay, there's there's three for you right off the bat, right? So there's there's an example of, um, of kind of my style. My top recommendations are, depending on what you're trying to do, you get a bigger reach. So if you're actually trying to sell something, if you're trying to go for conversions, try to stick to like 200,000, 800,000 in your audience. Um, if you're trying to get good engagement, on, on a post, like get more likes, shares, comments, and everything, then, then it's okay to go up over a million, two million plus. Um, if you're trying to get viral video views, then you're gonna wanna go with a big audience, okay? Um, so the smaller you get, the more targeted you're getting, which is why it becomes easier to sell. But you don't really wanna get much smaller than 200,000 because then it becomes expensive. So the smaller audience, like if you said, okay, I wanna target 35 year old men who are real estate agents who live in Phoenix, Arizona, who work for Keller Williams real estate agency, you know, that might only be like, there might only be 200 total agents like that in the world or whatever in that area. 
So it would be very expensive to target, to laser target in on 200 people. But the bigger, what they call broad, the more broad you go, let's write that down, um, the more broad you go, the cheaper your engagement. But the more broad, the less likely to convert. Okay, and then I'll put like intermediate users, learn about broad targeting with, uh, learn about maturing a pixel, let's just call it maturing a pixel. Okay, intermediate, if you guys are beginners, don't even worry about that. You know, and because this, this right here, if you're intermediate, if you guys are watching your intermediate, what you could do is you could go very broad, like an audience in the millions, and as long as you're using a Facebook pixel, Facebook will start to optimize that audience and find buyers in that broad audience. So for instance, you could actually advertise to like, you have a soccer product, you're advertising to 10 million people who like soccer. Well, in the beginning, Facebook has no idea who out of those 10 million people wanna buy your product. But after time, after you start selling it, Facebook will get smarter. And after you made about 100 sales, Facebook will say, oh, I get it. We know who's buying your product. It's this little group. And Facebook will find it for you. So Facebook will take the guesswork out of it for you. But if you're a beginner, you don't have that kind of money to just throw around. You don't have thousands of dollars to just like play around with until Facebook figures it out. You, in the beginning, you've got to figure it out because you don't have endless amounts of money. Okay, that's, that's why I'm trying to focus on beginners because beginners are, um, are a little bit better for that. Okay, um, so again, those are my basic ideas and concepts there about that. So now, for interests, you can, you can advertise one interest at a time or you can group them, okay? So um, let's go here and let's go um, understanding Facebook interests, which are like, you know, um, keywords for your audience, okay? Understanding Facebook interests, okay? You can target one interest at a time or group them. You can also create groups, um, you can also create rules that they must like two interests or they must like three interests or four or five uh, each, and so on and so on. So you could say they must like this and this. That is called intersecting audiences and it's a very popular thing that even beginners are going to use. Okay, called intersecting audiences. We'll come back and we'll kind of cover that in a second. Um, in fact, I'll put a little thing here. Intersecting audiences and how to use them. Okay, so that's called intersecting audiences. Um, also, you can exclude uh, keywords, interests, and keywords. This helps um, make sure you are targeting the right audience. Okay, so we're going to talk real quick about, I'm going to show you how to do one interest at a time. I'm going to show you groups. I'm going to show you how to be able to set a rule where they must like multiple things, intersecting audiences, and I'm going to show you exclusions. Okay, so um, let's see if I can make this easier. Okay, we got, let me go in all caps. Let's go groups. No, we'll go single interests, grouped interests, um, intersecting interests and excluding interests. There we go. So I'm going to cover like all four of these really quick for you, okay? Single interests, grouped interests, intersecting, and excluding. Or um, maybe I'll put like solos a little better. Okay. Okay, so here we go. This would be an example of a solo interest. You have one keyword, one idea, and that's it. It's a big enough audience size. Let's go for it. So I'm literally just going to go to Ty Lopez, and that's it. I'm just going to advertise to fans of Ty Lopez. And the benefit of this is that if my ad, maybe, I'm, maybe I have a picture of me and Ty Lopez in the ad. Well, if I have a picture of me and Ty Lopez, then it's really going to work well because Ty Lopez's fans are going to recognize him. Or if maybe, if, maybe, if maybe I'm doing a webinar with Ty Lopez this Thursday, then it would be nice to advertise to friends of Ty Lopez because they're going to be likely to convert. So there are times when you want to advertise to one audience specifically and see how well it does. But generally, there's also the ability to group. So when you group, the idea is very, very simple. You can click the mouse here and you just add another interest. So when you add in one, Facebook is going to start guessing 
some more interests you might be um, interested in. So I'm targeting influencers, which is a group. So Gary Vaynerchuk is also an influencer. So now I have two people. The audience size went up. So when you group items, when you group things, the audience size goes up. So watch, grouped interests. When you group interests, audience size goes up, okay? That's important to understand. So if you're trying to get your audience size higher, you would group together interests, okay? Gary Vaynerchuk, Ty Lopez, let's do Grant Cardone, and let's do um, you know, Ryan Dice, and let's do Russell Brunson. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I got five influencers, that's 26 million people right there. Okay, so when you group things, the, the interest, the reach goes up. So if you're trying to get a high reach, you would wanna do so by grouping. I could run solo ads to just to Gary Vaynerchuk, another one just to Grant Cardone, another one to Russell, another one to Ryan, another one to Ty, or I can group them. Now the way group, group things work is this. Facebook is gonna show this ad to people that like Gary Vaynerchuk or who like Grant Cardone. So this is not, the person does not have to like all five of these. They just have to, like in this audience, it's a big audience, all somebody has to do is like one of these people and they're in this audience. They don't have to like all of them, okay? So that's very, very, very different, okay? If I want them to like all of them, I have to narrow down the audience to do that. Or if I wanna exclude one, like I want all people that like all these people, but people who do not like Ty, Ty Lopez, I would exclude Ty Lopez. So this right here just basically creates like a big pot, a big pile of all the fans of all of these people, and it's 26 million people, boom, big audience. Now, let's narrow it down. Let me show you um, what it would be like if I wanted to advertise to, what if I wanted to target people who happen to like all five of these people? What if I was gonna have, like an example, what if I'm gonna have a conference and I have guest speakers, Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, Russell Brunson, Ryan Dyson, Ty Lopez. F these five people are my guest speakers. I could put a picture with all five of them and I could do a super hyper targeted ad where I'm only targeting people that like all five of them. I would do that with the narrow audience feature. So watch how this narrow audience feature works, okay? I'm gonna create one here that is Ty Lopez, and I'm gonna create another one, narrow further. I'm gonna create one here that is uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, narrow further. I'm gonna create one here that is, um, let's see, Ryan Dice, and I'm gonna narrow further, I'm gonna create one here that is, you know, Grant Cardone, wherever he went, right there, okay. So now each one of these is a solo audience. Grant, Ryan, Gary, Ty, and then we'll put Russell in this one. I'll just delete those. Anytime you wanna delete something, you just hover, you click the little X. Okay, so look what I have here. That audience of 26 million people is now only 11,000 people, okay? Because I said to Facebook, I wanna target people who like Russell Brunson and who also like Ty Lopez and who also like Gary Vaynerchuk, also like Ryan Dice, also like Grant Cardone. So I'm basically saying, hey look, show me people who like all five of these people. That's 11,000 people. That is called a hyper-targeted audience. Those people are like the most loyal people that I could ever advertise to. They like all these people, and if I said all these five people are gonna be on a webinar tonight, or let me be more realistic. Let's say that I was gonna just do a, a lead capture. Let's say I was like, hey, I wanna generate leads. Hey, I've got um, the top lessons I learned from Ty Lopez, Grant Cardone, Russell Brunson, Gary Vaynerchuk, and Ryan Dice. Here's the top five lessons I learned from all these five people. I could write a blog article with um, a lesson I learned from each one of them, and then I could advertise this audience, and it would be insanely perfectly matched. But because it's small, it's gonna be expensive. Remember, the smaller it is, the more expensive it is. The larger it is, the cheaper it is. So this is a little too small for my taste, but if I had a product I was selling with all five of these people in it, I might try this. Now, some of these people are more popular than others. You know, Russell Brunson, 147,000 people there. Ty Lopez, 3.8 million. So some people are more popular than others. Gary, 3.8 million. Ryan, 193. Grant Cardone, 1.2 million. So if I took out Ryan, and if, then it's gonna jump it up to, to a bigger audience, okay? So do you see how that works right there? And if I take out this right here, Russell, even bigger. 6.5 million people like Ty Lopez, Gary Vaynerchuk, and Grant Cardone each. So basically the same type of person that follows one generally follows the others as well. So now I have a much bigger audience. So 
as I continue to add more people to it, it's going to continue to narrow. See, I have 6.5. I can narrow it further down. Let's do, um, let's add uh, Mike Dillard, and it's going to go down to 3.6 million, okay? Let's narrow it further, and let's add, um, let's go to Lewis House. And now it's 3.4 million. It keeps going down. Narrow it further. Let's go down and let's do people who also like Ray Higdon. And it just keeps going down and down and down and down and down. Okay. So you can kind of do that. Okay. That's another way to be able to do it. What you're looking to do is you're looking to basically either group them together or you're looking to what's called intersect them. Now, let me give you something that's more Shopify related for this. Okay. Um, let's go here. Hold on. Let me erase all these. You just click the X to erase them all. Okay. Let's do Shopify related. So if I want to target people who like cigars, okay, let's target men. Let's narrow it down. Men who are 35 years old, older men, because younger men don't generally smoke cigars as, uh, on, on average. So older men who like cigars, there's 2.7 million people in the uh, United States, right? I think we're running in the United States audience. So in the United States, ages 35 to 65 men, there's 2.7 million people who like cigars. Now, what I'll do is I might narrow this audience down. Okay? Let's narrow it down. People who like cigars and who like scotch. Okay? Scotch whiskey. Okay? There is a good audience. Now, if I'm in a Shopify audience, remember, the audience size I'm looking for is about 200,000, 800,000 if I'm trying to sell a Shopify product. So here you go. 620,000 people, that's in between 200,000 and 800,000, 620,000 people that like cigar and like scotch. So if I can find a product in Shopify that has to do with scotch and cigars, then I can advertise to this audience and this is going to be a very good audience. These are people that like scotch, whiskey, and cigars. So maybe what I'm doing is I'm using, a, in, in, in the graphic, maybe I'm using a picture of a, of a person smoking a cigar, sipping a glass of scotch. And let's look at that. Let's go to Google Images just to, just to give an example of what you would do to target that audience. Scotch and cigar. Okay. So we'll go over here to Images. Okay. So see this image right here? This is called an intersecting audience. Okay. This is really important to know as a beginner. There are two, two very separate things that go together. On one hand, you have people that like scotch but do not like cigars. And then on the other hand, you have people who like cigars, but do not like scotch. So this audience contains people that hate this. So, but it also contains people that like this. By using an intersecting audience, you can tell Facebook, show me people who like cigars and like scotch. Who like cigars and like scotch. And that is where images like this represent a combination of two things that the person loves, okay? That is called an intersecting audience and that is what is powerful, okay? So what you're looking to do is you're looking to learn how to tap these intersecting audiences because you're able to take a very large audience and make it just right to sell Shopify ads by intersecting it. So any chance you can in all your products, ask yourself, does my image represent two different audiences that normally might not like each other but Facebook is going to find the ones that like each other directly. That is the power of intersecting audiences. So this power here of these intersecting audiences and how to use them, okay? Um, find two or more interests and use the narrow further option. For example, interest one cigars, interest to scotch whiskey. Okay. Now you guys should do this on your own. You guys should go in here. Uh, look what I did. 35 year old men, 35 plus men who like cigars and who, and, and I use narrow further and I put in scotch. Okay. You should try this yourself. So you get an idea for how to do this. Okay. Now these are, um, this right here, so the, the, the methodology, um, the, the understanding is this. Okay, the under, let, me, let me put this down. The understanding is this. Some people who like cigars don't like scotch. 
some people who like scotch don't like cigars. Facebook will only show your ad to people who like both. That's, that is the power. That's the, that's the sales proposition right there. Facebook will only show it to people who like both. Um, if you can use an image of both, it will convert much better, okay? That's what this comes into. That's where we're coming on here to images. If you can find an image that represents. Now, this isn't necessarily a product, but you can find it. Go to, go to AliExpress, you know, and type in, you know, so just start by typing in the, the, the combined keywords, cigars and scotch, okay? Here's an example. Here's some, um, a five panel, a five panel printed canvas of, of a picture of cigars and scotch, okay? There's a five panel printed canvas right there. So that, that's an example right there, right? And then there's also print on demand canvases. So there's also, you know, you can go to a print on demand company. There's lots of them out there. You know, here's interest print, for example. And you can go find something. You want to go get an image of cigar and scotch and see what it might, what it might be good on. You know, like what I might do is I might take like pillows. And then what you might do is put like, you know, a design on a pillow. Maybe not a cigar on a pillow, but you know what I'm saying? Like home decor, you know, cigars and scotch. You could basically put it on all kinds of stuff, okay? So you just kind of look for like those, um, those options. Okay, you, you look for what might work. Okay, you look for something where it might work. Maybe a cell phone case with cigars and scotch on it, a canvas print, um, like, a, like a canvas print like this, art prints. You know, you could do like an art print. So a canvas print is just like this. You can go and you can customize a canvas print. Um, oh, it looks like I don't have a flash running. I'm not going to do it live right now. But you can basically upload a picture of cigar and wine on this and then you have something you can sell to that audience, okay? Get a cigar and wine canvas print. And that's kind of what this is. This is a five panel print with a nice picture to sell it, you know? And this is going to cost you, you know, whatever. You could do large size, framed, and that's $60. Large size with no frame is $14. So you could go like large size, no frame, okay? That's $14 a year cost. You could sell them for $29.95 and make money on this. So that's an example. You're, you're finding a way to intersect an audience. So now, Let's, um, let me give you guys that are watching live, let me give you a challenge, okay? Challenge in the Facebook, um, quick, uh, quick Facebook live challenge. Post your ideas of two intersecting audiences, but um, they're related to each other, but one might not like the other, okay? Just like the cigars and scotch um, audience. Okay. I want to see right now. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes. Go ahead and do it. And if you guys are watching the replay, you can also comment in the comments as well, even if you're watching the replay, but do that right now. Take a second and think about it yourself. Post your ideas of two intersecting audiences right now, and then I'll show you more, but do it, do it. Give yourself a second and think through and go in the comments right now and see what you can do. Okay. Give you guys a second here and then I'm going to start reading them. Okay, let's go here. Let's see if anybody's got some good ideas. Okay, fire and water. Not necessarily, because fire and water aren't necessarily as much things people like. Those are just general um, elements. <clears throat> okay, pet owners, dogs and cats. There's an interesting one. Some people like dogs but hate cats. Some people like cats but hate dogs. But if you had a product that was like maybe like an example for this one, Bruce, would be like a pet grooming product. Uh, a, a pet grooming product that works for both a dog and a cat. So let's say like pet grooming. Um, you might find like something like this right here. Okay. So see how there's a, there's this there's this hand right here that basically it's a, it's a, it's a glove like a mitt you wear and it can basically um, gently you can massage and pet your your dog because dogs shed you know so you could basically do that. But here's the thing. The question is, if you just had this picture and you advertise to people who like cats, it wouldn't work. But the, you gotta, you gotta, if you had a picture of a cat and a dog, if in your example, if you showed how this is good for dog lovers and cat lovers, you could actually target people who love dogs and cats. Now, go here in the feedback. 
and you start looking at this, um, you start looking at this thing, like, look, my dogs loved it. But look at this one right here. Very good to my cats. My cats love them. So see, here's a product where dogs love them and cats love them. It's the same exact product, but people are using them for your dogs and cat, dog and cat. So people are using this um, to be able to take care of their dogs and their cats. Now that you know that, this image right here would only go well to dog owners, but if you could do an image for dog and cat. So that's where an idea like that might help. Dogs and cats, you could take a product and make it match both. You could take a picture of both. You could say, here's how to, here's how to groom your dog, here's how to groom your pet, and you can target people who like both so they're not turned off. Clothing and makeup, um, you know, it's a little bit more general, uh, and I would say that's, get, dive a little deeper, because everybody has clothing, and all women have makeup, so it's not really, it's, it's not, you want to get a little bit more specific. Bags and makeup, I would still stay a little bit more specific. Um, let's see, I'm not sure what the dark post uh, question is regarding. Okay, let's see, wine and hunting, there we go, there's a good one, okay, because hunters, people that are out there hunting um, might not like wine and people like wine might not like hunting at all. So there's, there's two that are like, those are two that are great. Let's, let's go in and let's type, type in wine and hunting. Okay. Just as an example, you got to go, the first one you're going to do wine interest, and then you're going to narrow it down and you're going to do hunting. So look, 6.9 million people like wine, hunting, interest, and let me go all let me make this a little bit bigger. Let's go 21 and over. Okay. So 12 million people in this audience, wine and hunting. Okay. But if I just do hunting, it's 33 million. So I'm able to narrow it down by typing in wine and you've got a crossover audience. There are 12 million people who like both hunting and wine, 12 million people. So you're able to narrow it down. Now you can narrow this down even further. Like, let me give you an example of narrowing it down further. Okay. Let's say, um, Let's be more specific, hunting and craft beer. That's 2.4 million. So instead of wine, what if you did a, a, a type of, not, not just beer, but a type of beer. Now you can target a craft beer ad specifically for hunters, right? So you could do like, you know, you go over here and you would do like, go in here, go craft beer, find a product, you know, find, find these um, products that are selling whatever and see if there's something having to do with craft beer you know, um, you know, maybe like a craft beer sign, like a vintage sign. Uh, you could find like a craft beer sign. Um, there's like lots of things you could do. Now these don't really look like craft beer so much. So I don't know that I would use these if I was doing craft beer, but, and I wouldn't use something that's like a, a brand, but what I would do is like, just to give you an example, just, I'll take any one of these. Okay. Take, take like it was this one right here, like a, a vintage, uh, a vintage type sign. Okay. Or, or this one here, everyone needs something to believe in, I believe I'll have another beer. Now, here's a, here's a beer product, okay, something, somebody might want to, uh, to put this like in their man cave or in their whatever. What you're looking to do is you're looking to maybe try to find a way to add another, add an element to this that basically adds another audience. So let's say hunting. If you want to target this to people who like beer, that's going to be too big. But if you can somehow turn this into a hunting ad, what you might do is instead of it just being on a wall, what you might do is you might want to do like, get, go to like Google and type in like log cabin interior, okay? So somebody who lives in like a log cabin home, okay? And you might want to find like a pic, you might want to find like a picture of like a log cabin wall or something like that, right? Like, you know, maybe like a better picture of this. So do you see how they have these pictures hanging on the side of that wall right there? Well, that's the kind of concept right there is that if those pictures right there were that same craft beer vintage sign, if we just put that same craft beer vintage sign right here and we show that, then suddenly it's a direct match. You know, here's people who like, you know, um, let's say like hunting wall vintage sign. Let's see if there's somebody, let's, let's see like, and you might even be able to find one that's more like beer related, like hunting and beer uh, as well. But see, like, hunters always have these hunting signs, right? Like gun signs, Remington guns. They love these vintage signs to, to hang up, right? So um, let's go hunting beer sign. So you're looking for something that's either like, like bush hunting. There's a beer sign. Here's a bunch of people drinking beer and hunting. Uh, deer and beer makes me happy. That's actually even a better one. 
That right there is probably, we've just found like a winner, okay? Deer and beer make me happy, okay? You're targeting somebody who likes hunting and somebody who likes beer, and you're targeting with this sign, and you could say like, this makes a great gift for, um, you know, for your hunting friends, stuff like that. So you, you can go and you can find like, deer and beer makes me happy, gone hunting sign right there. You can find these combined signs. You can get ideas. Eat, sleep, hunt. Um, you know, this is fishing and hunting together. Um, let's look at this one. Some, girl, some girls like diamonds and pretty rings. I like camo and shooting things. Some girls like diamonds and pretty rings. I like camo and shooting things. See how they're putting it on t-shirts? What they're doing is they're combining audiences. They're basically taking uh, women uh, and going into the gun niche and the hunting niche. And, um, you know, you could target women who are like the Second Amendment niche, women who uh, like camouflage-related stuff, all of that. And then so basically you're targeting these intersecting audiences. You're really getting in there and diving in and getting um, – getting people to buy stuff like that. So that's what these intersecting audiences are. You know, like another example might be like, let's go back, hunting and craft beer. Let's go back to um, cigars. Okay. Cigars. And then let's go and narrow down the audience and let's do golf. Okay. So it's 12 million. And we just narrowed it down to, to half that, to 5 million. Okay. Cigars and golf. So, so now you can go over here and go like, cigar holder and you could find like a cigar a cigar clip let's do a cigar clip okay and you see like these cigar clips like this cigar clip right here right it's a dollar 55 um, but as soon as you add e-packet to it it's three dollars and fifteen cents so this product right here I can sell these for three dollars and fifteen cents this is a cigar clip well what I can do is instead of just showing a cigar clip if I show how it clips onto a golf cart then I'm going to be able to sell it better. So let's go up here and let's go like cigar clip golf. And if I sell this, it's the same exact product, right? But if I sell it using this image right here, then it's going to sell to that specific audience. Does that make sense? Like, like right here, if I just target people interested in cigars, it might sell. But if I do cigar and golf and I use a picture of cigar and golf, then it's going to do so much better, okay? It's gonna do. It's literally gonna do so much better. So you find these like cigar clips like this. You find a really good image of a cigar clip. Find one that you think will sell, and then that product is cheap enough that you could give it away for free plus shipping. Say, hey, do you love cigars and golf? Um, if so, we 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 overstocked and have a thousand extra cigar clips. If you'd like one free, just pay shipping. Click here. Boom. And next thing you know, you just give it away for free. You charge like. $7.95 shipping and handling or something like that. And you're gonna make and you're getting them for three bucks, right? Charge $7.95 shipping and handling. Now, these are also so cheap. These cigar um, cutters are also so cheap here, the cigar things, whatever. You could probably contact this person and buy them in bulk. You know, you could find a good vendor and go buy these things in bulk and just go get like a thousand sent to your house. You get a thousand in a box, sent to your house really cheap, and then you could just mail them out two days shipping to your clients. And then when you mail them out two days shipping, you can include, like, uh, let's go to let's go this this side. Let's think, let's go to like Teespring. Include a discount to like a, a shirt that you have, like a shirt design. You know, so like you can put like a few a few shirt designs. Never underestimate an old man with a cigar. Okay, so you can basically take like three or four shirt designs that have to do with cigars, and when people order the cigar golf clip, you know what you can do is you could basically say, hey, I'll give you. You know, put a little insert when you ship it to them and say, hey, I'll give you $5 off any one of these t-shirts if you want. And now you're driving them back to your store to make another purchase and you're still profitable. So it's really easy when you get like basic cheap products like that to do this. So that's the idea is that cigar and golf. Now, these are general audiences. The word cigar and the word golf. These are not narrow audiences. So what I want to do is I want to show you, um, you know, and, and, and I'll go back to your thing, but... Um, Learn to narrow down your audiences by brainstorming sub-audiences, okay? So learn to, learn to narrow them down, okay? Um, 
for example, let's take golf as the main, instead of using golf, let's narrow this down. So what the, one of the best ways to narrow it down to do brainstorming is I'll go to like a golf, um, I'll go to like, let's say like golf store, okay? Maybe I'll go to like, I'll, I'll just look for like a golf store, golf shops, and I'll start clicking on these. And I'll just kind of see if, they, if I get any ideas for how to narrow it down. Okay, right here on the top. Brand, they're narrowing it down by brands, clubs, accessories, apparel, shoes, balls, bags, training. So they're narrowing it down for us. So let's, let's get some of those. Let's go, to, let's go into um, golf clubs, apparel. Um, what else do they say? Golf clubs, golf apparel, golf brands. Okay. And let's even make it even, even easier than that. Instead of clubs, let's just call this equipment. And in equipment, you'll have like, you know, you could have like drivers, putter, stuff like that, okay? So you can just start narrowing down. Just start brainstorming. You need to do this anyways in your niche. So if you're going to sell something golf-related, instead of just using the keyword golf, take a minute and brainstorm, okay? There's equipment. There's going to be different types of equipment, right? Apparel, we'll just call this clothing, Okay? So you guys get the equipment. I don't need to do a sub bullet points. Okay, equipment, clothing, brands, stuff like that. Now, let's go, let's go to another one. Let's go do like, let's just type in the word golf instead of golf store. And let's dive in. Okay, let's go down here to golf, golf.com. And let's go to like a main site and see how a store, we know a store is going to be broken down by products. Let's look at this. So they have basically, what is masters? That's a tournament, equipment, tips, instructions, courses. So right off the bat, we could also get courses and tournaments and players. So right off the bat, let's start doing that. You got golf players, golf tournaments, golf um, courses, golf associations, um, magazines, TV shows, movies. Do you see what I'm, I'm doing here? I'm taking golf. Now, what you do is you subcategorize all these. So we got, um, we've got we got golf uh, movies, let's say. So now we go back to Google. Sorry, Google, not very bad. Go to Google, and we're going to type in golf movies. This is how you're going to drill down and get your audience. Golf movies, Caddyshack, Happy Gilmore, Tin Cup, right? So you're going to write those down. Caddyshack, Happy Gilmore, Tin Cup. Um, only the ones that are actually golf, right? So... Legend of Bagger Vance, greatest game ever played. Uh, Stroke of Genius. So we'll just do Bagger Vance, greatest game ever played. Bobby Jones, Stroke of Genius. Okay, and if you're a golfer, it helps because if you're a golfer, you actually know if these are actually any uh, any good or not, right? So there you go. And then some of these are probably like not as much about golf, and some of them are are different, you know. So. What you do is you basically have like a list of like movies, okay? Then you go to TV shows, okay? Well, golf TV shows. Look at how simple this is. Golf TV shows, okay? You got The Big Break, Golf Central, Faherty, Faherty. So you got Big Break, Golf Central, Golf Channel even. Uh, and then you got Faherty. And you can kind of like go through and you, you're just kind of brainstorming, right? So there's some TV shows. You really only want to take the popular ones. Okay, and then you go back through and you go through each one of these, okay? Magazines. And you're going to do the same thing, golf magazines. And this is what you're going to do, okay? Golf, golf magazine, golf digest, golf week, golf world. So golf magazine, golf digest, golf world, and then golf week. And, you know, any others that might be popular. Okay. Okay. Now you go to associations. What are some, what are some golf clubs? Golf associations. Okay. Amer AGA, American Golf Association. I'll put the initials too. AGA, American Golf Association. And you guys might be wondering why I'm taking the time doing this, but this is how money's made. So this is how we make money. Amer Arizona Women's Golf Association. So I don't know if I need Arizona, but Women's Golf Association. Um, USGA, United States Golf Association, USGA, 
United States Golf Association. And then what else do we have? We have you know, Junior Golf Association. These are so important, you guys, because you're going to need to kickstart this. Junior Golf Association, um, EWGA, Executive Women's Golf Association, EWGA, Executive Women's Golf Association. Okay, are you starting to get the? Are you guys starting to get the idea? American Junior Golf Association, AJGA, AJGA. And then there's also like the, the big ones, PGA, Professional Golf Association. Um, okay, so you basically could get these associations and clubs. They could go like golf associations, um, and you could really go, go looking. I mean, there's, there's probably like a bunch, you know. Um, look at all these golf associations. Now, that doesn't mean they're all – okay, here's another thing. This is a great one, Professional Disc Golf. Now, Disc Golf – is where you throw a frisbee into a net. Golf is where you hit a golf ball with a club. Two totally different things, right? So, but a lot of times it's called the same thing, like professional golf association, professional disc golf. So let's talk about exclusions. Let's go back to exclusions for a minute because it's gonna be important for you to know um, how to be able to exclude, excluding interests. Um, example, golf association, Disc golf. We'll just say golf and disc golf. Okay. Golf and disc golf. Okay. Um, two very different sports. FB might confuse them. Okay. Exclude. Or sorry. Include the one you want. Exclude the other. Okay. So let's go over here. And you're going to notice this when you start going. So let's say that golf is your target market, right? Golf. Okay, well, disc golf is going to show up as an interest, right? And there's going to be all kinds of disc, now professional disc golf. It's all starting to show up, right? Now that's problematic because now disc golf is already included in here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go down here to exclude. You click the exclude one, and then you're going to put disc golf, and you're going to exclude the interest disc golf, okay? And maybe I'm going to go a little bit more and go disc golf again and look for an interest that has a lot of people, you know, um, and maybe I'll do like disc golfing or something like that and just try to see. So you, you only really need to exclude it if it has a lot of people. So don't worry about employers, but look over here on the, on the right. It's got tens of thousands, you know, so you kind of see like some of these are big, some of them aren't, but I'm going to go ahead and exclude a few. I'm just going to be careful. It only takes a second and I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, exclude and you can actually ex exclude anything you need, but disc golf interests. Okay, so anyways, there you go. You're going to exclude that. So now all of those people are out of my audience. Now I'm just back to golf, okay? So what you do is you brainstorm your list of all of these different types of things, right? You're going to, you know, you're going to go through, you're going to players, you're going to do like Tiger Woods, Bubba Watson, you know, stuff like that. Tournaments, you're going to do, you know, Masters, Tournament, um, U.S. Open and whatnot. Courses, you're going to do like Pebble Beach, you know, stuff like that, associate. You see what I'm saying? Um, equipment, you're going to do whatever. Clothing, brands, it's probably going to be like Nike Golf, Puma Golf, stuff like that. So what, what I want you to do is I want you, if you're in the golf niche, you're going to advertise to golf. It's in your, if you have golf products, and you're going to do this for whatever niche you're in, this is how you're going to advertise on Facebook. You're going to, you're going to do some research, and you're going, to, you're going to try to form a group of that uh, interest. Okay, a group of that interest. So let's start with one of these. Let's do um, players, golf players. So I'm going to type, type in Tiger Woods as a golf player, interest only. Okay, and I'm going to race golf. Now I just have Tiger Woods. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here, and it's going to start recommend, recommending me interest of other players. Roy McIlroy, Jordan Spieth, Phil Mickelson. And if I'm unsure, because maybe I'm not like a golfer, and I don't know, then you, you can look it up. But sometimes it'll tell you, like Tom Watson, golfer. Anytime it tells you, like, the, the, it has the, the thing golfer next to it, that helps you out a lot, right? But do I want to put Masters Tournament in there? No, because Masters Tournament is not a player. That would fall under the um, tournaments right here, right? 
So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to group a list called players, and I'm going to group them all together. You know, I'm going to get a bunch of players together. See, it's already 7.6 million people. Okay, I'm going to get a bunch of players together. And once I have all the players together, I've got United States 21 to 65 people interested in these players. Once I get it all together, I'm going to save the audience. And I'm going to do like this. Golf. And I'm going to do um, 21 plus USA players. Or maybe I'll even do, I'll probably do like this. Golf players. USA 21 plus. And if it was men, maybe I'd put men or something like that. Something where if I glance at this, I have an idea for what's the audience. Look, United States, 21 to 65, and a bunch of golfers in it. Golf players, USA, 21 plus. Save. And just like that, I've saved my audience. I now have a saved audience. Boom. Just like that. And I can access it anytime now. Golf players, USA, 21 plus, right there. I can access it anytime I want in the future. And I can create a new one right here. United States. 21 plus, and now this time instead of golf, players, let's do golf courses. Okay, so let's look for one that says Turnberry Golf Course. You start with one, and it'll start recommending more. Only interests. Golf club, golf club, golf club, golf club. You start putting all these golf clubs together in its, in its own group. Golf club, golf club, golf club. Look at this, it's getting easy. Golf club, golf course, golf course. And you know, you might recognize some. You might go, okay, Augusta, uh, Pebble Beach, you know, Whistling Straits. Um, you might recognize some of these. I, I don't know, you know, TPC, San Antonio, uh, Bay Hill, TPC at Sawgrass. So you might like basically start recommending some, rec uh, noticing some, right? So you're going to get a big audience of a bunch of golf clubs. And once you do, same thing. You're going to save this audience and you're going to call it. Um, the same thing you did, golf clubs or golf courses, uh, US um, 21 plus, okay? Just same, same thing like that, and then you're going to save, okay? And now you can go and you can access that anytime you want right here from your saved audiences. And so what I'm doing right now is I've just got two. Now I've got golf players, I've got golf courses, and I can go and I can basically go and create all of these things right now. I can go create a whole network of all of these different groups of things. Now, why is that important? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to go here and I'm going to basically, instead of using a saved audience, I'm going to create new, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go here. In the future, when I place a new ad, I'm going to go, okay, I want to target golf players. There's my golf players. I'm going to click edit. And I'm going to narrow it down and also type in cigars. And then boom. I now have an intersecting audience that I can use. Just like that. Now I have people that like, people who match cigar and also match one of these interests. And now I got a nice audience. Okay? So you can save these. And that, that's what I would do. So in a nutshell, what I would do is I would go through, for example, go through and brainstorm a bunch of brands. Okay? And then match them and then intersect them with cigars. You have this information now. What I would do is I would run one ad, um, you know, uh, when using intersecting audiences, run several ads like this. Okay. So it's going to be basically like this. Okay, It's going to be $5 a day to cigars plus, um, and I actually use an X for intersecting by the way. When I, when I'm thinking, when I understand it's like cigars and uh, so then I'll do, uh, I use X for that intersecting. That's, to me, it's intersect. Cigars intersecting with golf players. And then you give them another $5 a day ad to Cigars X golf courses. Another $5 a day ad to Cigars X golf um, associations. Do you see what I'm saying? And then what I'm doing is I'm running to that product that's Cigars and Golf, but I'm running it to these different niche groups because so I could have several because here's why, and I might even do one that is just uh, to cigars and golf. Now, I'll do one that's just the basic terms, cigar and golf. You know, I'll literally just go in here and I'll just have cigars, golf. But the reason I'll do one with players is that 
Facebook, out of all of these groups of audiences, one of them is going to work well. Okay? Um, you don't know which one it is. For example, a lot of times, if you can get a lot of them, a lot of times it's associations. You know, the kind of person that likes the USGA, think about it logistically. If you're, let's say, targeting women, the kind of woman that likes the Women's Golf Association is going to be more passionate about golf than a, rape, than a woman who just likes golf. So like in this big audience of, of just golf, if I just did golf, a woman who likes golf is, that's okay, but a woman who likes literally the Women's Golf Association of America, she is super passionate about golf. So she's gonna convert better. So that's why you wanna take the time to brainstorm like this, okay? You wanna take the time to like be thinking of things. You know, and a lot of times the brainstorming will be done for you. Like one, once you get in here, once you get in here and start doing this, like instead of like players, you know, if you get in here and do like golf magazine, okay, and you click golf magazine, it's going to start re recommending like golf digest. It's going to start recommending things to you, you know, golf channel. Remember some of the stuff we talked about, you know, it's going to start doing that. Like if we want to do golf brands, I'm already seeing brands show up. So let's do like golf brands instead. Okay. And it'll start. So there's Titleist and there's Callaway. And there's TaylorMade, there's Bridgestone, there's Cleveland Golf, Coburn Golf, King Golf, Adams Golf, um, Sirixen, uh, you know, FootJoy. There's all these golf brands, okay? And what you're doing is you're looking for a golf brand that would only be golf, okay? This is a group of all the golf brands. So then this would be Cigars X Golf Brands. Like, that's what, that would be this one. If they were playing, if they were doing it, it would be like this. You'd run a $5 a day ad to cigars intersecting with golf brands. And it would look like that. Okay? And then, and then if you're saving this, you could do, you could do like um, golf brands x cigars. You know, and then you could save it like that. US 21 plus. So now I have a matched audience right here. United States, 21 plus, and I might even do men. There's my audience. Golf brands intersecting with cigars, and I have this audience anytime I need it. I go and I make it once perfect. Now, of course, you could do the same thing with cigars. Cigar is a generic, team, generic term, so you could go in and you could do the same thing, the same thing we just did with all this golf stuff. You know, you could do the same thing with cigars, okay? So you take cigars, and like one of the categories might be brands. And then what you would do is, how do you do that? Go in here and just get some help from Facebook. Look at all these things that are coming up from cigars. These are related things, you know, related things. And you could also type in cigar, and look at cigar companies. Oliva Cigar, Rocky Patel Premium Cigar. So you get rid of the word cigar, and you could go in here and get brands. Brands, cigar brand. Cigar brand, okay, so you have brands, that's one that you know you have, and look at all these brands. You can go through and get all these brands of cigars. See, peop, like, what's the odds you would, have, you would have woke up this morning and thought, I'm gonna advertise to Ashton Cigar Bar? You know, you just wouldn't have thought to advertise to that, right? So, um, and then there's magazines like Cigar Aficionado. So that one term, Cigar Aficionado, so yeah, somebody might like cigars. Somebody, see, so here's the difference. On Facebook, your uncle, writes a post and says, I just tried a cigar for my first time. Uh, pretty weird experience. Well, Facebook now thinks your uncle likes cigars because your uncle made a post about, you know, hey, I just tried, out a, tried a cigar for my first time. Well, that's, not, that's why the cigars audience is so big. But people who like cigar aficionado, those are people who have to know a lot about cigars. They really understand cigars. They know about cigars. They love cigars. These are your passionate people, okay? These are the people that you really want to target. So that's why doing this kind of research is going to help. And then what you do is once you get all these in here and stuff like that, once you get whatever it is you're going to do, you remove the big one. So this cigar one right here, the problem is that if you have a big audience in here with millions and millions of people, what happens is that it's saying somebody who likes cigars generally or likes cigar aficionado. Well, that's not the same like this or this, that's not the same at all. So you want to basically use, cigar, use the word cigar for it to like, you type in cigar and it'll start showing you a bunch of related stuff. Then after it does, you want to erase it.
and now it'll bring down the audience, but now you've only got, now in this audience, you've only got the super loyal people. Now you want to try to get it up as high as possible. See, it's only 10,000 people. So you have all these people that like these specific brands of cigars and all these people that like these specific brands of golf. It's a, it's a very targeted, you got loyal golfers and loyal cigar people, but it's too small. You want to get that up over 200,000. So you'll just keep basically going after it. You know, there's, there's all these. And you might want to look for something that has like a, a lot more likes. Like this one here has 372,000. So let's see if that raises it from 10,000 at all. You know, yeah, it raised it to 11,000. So you want to kind of just try to find, you're looking to find some stuff in here that'll kind of raise it a little bit. You know, maybe there will be, maybe there won't. Romeo and Juliet, let's see if it raised it from 11, 11,000, nope. So you want to just kind of go in here and you want to do your best to try to get this as big as possible, okay? And it's hard. That's why people um, spend hours doing this kind of stuff, you know? And you're just looking for everything except the main cigar term right now to group them all. And you just keep going. Your goal is to try to get that up over 11,000. Now it's at 23,000. You just keep going until it's over 200,000. And just don't use, right here, don't use the word golf. Don't use that. Don't use golf employers. Just use these sub-brands, you know? So that's how you do it. That's called an intersecting audience. That's how a lot of people are making sales uh, with Shopify and with print on demand. This is the secret. And I just taught you guys the secret. Hopefully you guys appreciate that. So, you know, brands, um, you know, there's cigar um, shops, there's cigar accessories, whatever. There's cigar magazines, same kind of thing, right? You can do the same thing. Now remember, you want to look at your audience size. That's what you're really looking at um, is your audience size. So you want to go over here. If you're selling Shopify products, you're going to want that audience size to be 200,000, 800,000. So if you're going to do these, make sure you look at your reach. 200,000, 800,000 in the United States. That's going to be your core. Um, the bigger it is, the cheaper your engagement, but the harder to convert. The smaller it is, the more expensive it's going to cost you, but usually the better it converts. But you've got to be careful you don't spend too much money. Okay. So that's a basic rundown of that side of the, um, of the deal. That's your audience, okay? Now let's go over here and placing ads, go to placements. After you have your audience all created, placements right here, okay? You can do automatic placements or you can do edit placements. Um, I, I do both, but I, I just think edit, I think I'll show you what's actually happening. So right now, if we were to run, run this ad right now, it's gonna show it to people on their mobile phones and on their desktop, both. It's going to show it to them on the Facebook news feed when they're scrolling. It's going to show it to them in this new instant articles feature Facebook has. It's going to show it to them like inside of videos. It's going to show it to them on the right side column when they're, when they're scrolling around on Facebook. It's going to show it to them everywhere. So let's look at a real example. So here we are on Facebook. Let's go over to like the news feed. Okay. So these are the placements. When I'm in the news feed right now and I'm scrolling down, Right here on the right, there's two ads. See how this says sponsored? There's this ad here and there's this ad here. These are called right side ads, okay? The exact term they're using from right here is right column. Okay, right column ads. So if you want your ad to show up right here on the right column, this is called a right column ad, you need to make sure your picture is optimized for it. Look, your picture needs to look like this, okay? You have to have a good picture and your title is going to show up about like that. It's going to show your website and it's going to show uh, this, this amount of a description. So what you want to do when you're on Facebook is you want to start looking at ads and start getting ideas. Okay. If you like these ads, just take a screenshot. You know, there's plenty of screenshot tools um, and just take a screenshot. Uh, that's an example. I'm going to take it real quick. Right column ads. I just took a screenshot of that. You probably couldn't see it on your computer. And then, um, and then you just like kind of, sh you, I'll put it down here on the bottom. Uh, ads placement, example, right column, ads. And let's just, I'll just drop in that picture really quick that I just took. And I'll show you kind of like what those right column ads look like. So there we go. I just uh, basically dropped this in here. Let um, me make it a lot smaller. That's way too big. Okay. So there's an example of 
right there are right column ads. So if you want to do right column ads, you have to make sure you have a picture that's that format. If you have a square picture, it won't show up as a square on the right column. So you've got to look at these ads and you've got to kind of go, okay, if I'm going to place a right column ad, I want to have this. So my advice is uncheck right column unless you'll, you have a picture that looks like that, unless you have a, a, a horizontal picture that looks good. I'll just uncheck it. Okay, Instagram, newsfeed. Okay, again, Instagram um, is the same kind of a thing. When you go to Instagram, pictures are like this size right here. Okay, Instagram pictures are like squares. Okay, they're gonna, you can make them different sizes, but generally they work the best as squares on Instagram. So because of that, um, if, you're, if your picture, if you think your picture would be good on Instagram, then leave that checked. If you do not think it would be good on Instagram, then uncheck it. And if you don't know, then uncheck it. There's no reason to, to pay money to have it go on. And, you know, no reason to pay money if you're not sure. So uncheck right. Now, these two are more experimental. Same with audience network. These are all more experimental. So uncheck and uncheck. Don't even worry about those right now. This is where you're going to do most of your selling. The Facebook news feed. Mostly it's going to come from mobile, but you can go ahead and do it to all devices. And this is just going to put it right in the Facebook news feed when you're scrolling. So this is like this right here. This is a sponsored ad. It's right here in the newsfeed. See this? So that's as you're scrolling, you're going to start to see sponsored ads. See? So as I scroll, here's a, a regular post. Here's a regular post. Here's a regular post. Regular, regular, sponsored. Do you see the difference? This is sponsored. See how it says sponsored? And they've got basically a description and then they got a picture. See, this is just a picture. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just a picture. And they've got their link right here in the description. Okay? That's a sponsor post. As you scroll through, you'll start to notice them. Regular post, regular post, regular, regular. As you go through, you can start, look underneath their name, sponsored. So Mike Dillard is paying for this one. Okay? Uh, regular, 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 regular. And you just go through in your newsfeed and start looking. Sponsored. See that? Social Panda. So what they do is they basically fit these ads in the newsfeed, right, right, right there, they kind of fit them right in the newsfeed, okay? And when you see one that you like, if you're like, ooh, I like this one, I wanna, I wanna see if I can do something, or maybe you, if you like the description, or if you like the name, or if you like the picture, or if there's like a bunch of engagement and you're just inspired, if you ever like anything, go here to the top right arrow and check on it, and then find a little option that says save post. Boom, I just saved it, okay? So if you like something, you can save it, okay? So these are what's called newsfeed ads. You can see them in mobile, and you can see them in desktop, and these are called right column ads, okay? You can only see these on desktop. These aren't in mobile. Mobile is only the newsfeed. So on desktop, you can see right column ads. On mobile, you can see um, both. So that's really where most of your ads are gonna be, is gonna be feeds, all devices feeds, okay? That's gonna be your placement, okay? You don't really need to know, you don't need to worry about uh, any of this stuff at all, okay? The only reason you would do this right here is if you're, um, if you're selling like uh, cell phone cases, if you were selling like uh, print-on-demand cell phone cases, um, then you could go here and you could actually do like, um, you know, maybe you have like a iPhone, whatever, I don't know why I didn't show seven, but um, iPhone 6, 6 Plus, okay, something like that. Um, and I could do that, and I could say included devices, just Apple iPhone 6 Plus. I could do, I could, now notice it's going to lower my audience reach a bunch, but I could do just Apple iPhone 6 Plus if I was selling like an Apple iPhone 6 Plus case, right? Or maybe I'm selling a bunch of cases they can choose, but, it, you know, that's where you might be able to, to do that. You might be able to um, literally, like if you're selling phone cases, you might do that, or if you're selling apps, you might be able to do that. That's why you don't, need to, you don't need to worry about this, okay? You don't need to worry about this at all. You know, featured phones, Android devices, you don't really need to, do, to worry about that at all, okay? Um, so you don't need to go into advanced options, okay? Uh, you just keep everything the same. Just check news feeds. So when it comes to placements, edit placements, feeds. That's all you really need to, need to worry about, okay? When it comes to placements, simply click edit placements, and choose feeds, okay? Mobile and desktop. Only 
post on Instagram if you understand what you are doing. IG friendly image, okay? If, if, otherwise, you might just be throwing money over there and you don't even know what you're doing. Okay, so that's kind of your ads placement. There's an example right side ad for you if you wanted to see it. All right, so now we've got ad placements. The last thing left to do is a budget, your budget and your schedule, okay? There's options as daily budget or lifetime budget. I like to go with daily budget, um, and I like to go with $5. Yeah, it looks like I, I'm just getting a note right now. I got to wrap up in about five minutes, guys. So I'm going to kind of wrap this up pretty gone. We've been, I've been going for a while. Hopefully, hopefully you guys like the value. Uh, I'm going to go with daily budget, $5, run ads continuously. Okay, I don't even change anything else. Okay, so for, for budget, um, add budget, just choose daily budget at $5 a day and don't change anything else. Okay, unless, unless of course you are a, um, unless of course you're intermediate. If you're intermediate you can, or, or advanced, you can kind of do whatever you want in here and, and play around with it. Ad set name, you're probably going to want to name it something. You know, you're probably going to want to name something. So you got this, um, golf brand, cigars, 21 men. I'll just copy that and bring it over here. Just so you know what you're dealing with. Golf brand, cigars, US, 21 plus men. Um, and you might do like news feeds, you know, something like that. So you know where it's going. Okay, um, I'll do ad set naming. I'll, I'll, I'll talk later about a whole strategy I use for naming stuff, but it's not important when you're a beginner. When you're a beginner, you, like people worry about everything being right. You really don't need to have this that's right that much. Okay, so that's it. We chose an objective, an audience, placement, and budget schedule. Now, Let's go back and let's make this real, okay? I'm, av I'm advertising my rap trailer. So now let's go in real quick and let's make this real, okay? Let's create a new audience right now that I'm going to advertise my rap trailer to. Watch how fun this is going to be. I'm going to go uh, worldwide because I'm not selling anything from it. Worldwide, so I want to get cheap views. 18 to 65 is fine. I can even go younger. Uh, 16, I can even go 14 because I'm not selling anything. I'm not worried about age. Men and women is fine. Detailed targeting, let's do, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a music trailer, but it's entrepreneur based, it's called Life of an Entrepreneur. So let's do entrepreneur, um, like magazine. Okay, that's 12 million people. And let's narrow it down by people who like rap music. So let's do like, um, who's a popular rapper? Somebody, somebody right now in the comments, say, say a popular, first person to say like a popular rapper I recognize. Somebody comment right now with who's a, who's a popular rapper um, that I can use right now in real time for this ad just to kickstart it. Somebody give me a popular, uh, popular rapper. Future, Jay-Z, um, Ice Cube. Okay, let's use these things. Okay, ready? I'm going to target Entrepreneur Magazine and also people who like Jay-Z. Interests, not employers, interests. Okay? Look at my audience. It's 540,000 people. Let's get this thing higher. Who like Jay-Z and it now, now it's going to start giving me people. Future was somebody else named Future. Um, look at all this, 50 cent. So now I don't even have to do any work anymore. Okay? You just kickstart it off. So watch. People who like Entrepreneur Magazine, this is now 1.6 million. Let's get this thing higher. Drake. Let's see if it goes up at all. 1.8 million. Okay? See so this Kanye. Let's, get, let's build a big audience of Lil Wayne. People that like um, rapping. Dr. Dre. Tupac, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, just whatever, all these people. Rappers, Notorious B.I.G. Okay, it's getting up there, 3.4 million. So look at this, all people who like these rappers, but who also like Entrepreneur Magazine. So I'm taking rappers who also like a magazine about entrepreneurship. That's good enough, 3.4 million people. And this is an audience of um, rap, plus Entrepreneur Magazine. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to change this name. It's not influencers anymore. It's rap plus, I do intersex, Entrepreneur Magazine. Okay, let's just do rappers. Rappers who also like Entrepreneur Magazine. And here they are, 14 to so, 14 plus worldwide, all that. So I'll go down here on the bottom and I'll do rappers x Entrepreneur Magazine 14 plus worldwide, okay, for age, and it's men and women or whatever. And then I'm going to roll it in the news feeds, and so I'll put worldwide 
news feeds. Okay, and there you go. I got I got basically five dollars a day. There we go. Let me go to the next one. Let's continue. Now, I've got to either create an ad or po or use an existing post. If you already have a fan page, you can just use an existing post. You just go and do a search for your fan page, like this, Chris Record, and it's going to pull up all my page posts. And here you go. It pulled up that page post right there. It pulled it up for me. And I'm, I can preview what it looks like in mobile. And I can preview what it looks like on a featured phone. You know, you could, you could see what it looks like. So you can kind of see like, like this is where most people are going to see it, mobile newsfeed. Most people are going to see it like this. So I'm able, to, I'm able to preview this like most people are going to see it, ad preview. And you could also just do this, next, next, next. Okay? So this is how most people are going to see it. So there it is. I got, a, I got an existing post, so I don't have to go and create one right now. It's a little bit of a hassle to create one. I like if you just go on your, if you go on your fan page and post one. That's all you got to do. Um, don't worry about any of this. If you're really, if you know a lot about tracking, if you're intermediate or advanced, you'd put tracking here. If you're selling a face, if you're selling a Shopify product, which I'm not, you would check this, okay, and you would and you would use your pixel on this ad, okay. Um, and that's it. Look at how easy it is. If you have an existing post, it's easy. If you don't, you have to go create a new ad. I don't, because I only have five minutes, I don't have time to show you that. But just go to your fan page, go to what, create a fan page, go to a fan page, create a post. It's super simple. I teach it in all kinds of my trainings. Just go to your fan page, create a post, and then you'll be able to find it right here. Okay, so now I've got this post. I'm going to advertise to rappers who also like Entrepreneur Magazine to this 3.5 million person audience, and I'm just going to place the order. Did I miss something? Yeah, so I'm with Peter. Peter asked if I wanted to do a pixel. Yeah, it doesn't matter. If that's a question, it doesn't matter. You could, do, you could automatically, I do the pixel on everything by default. Um, your order has been placed. It's just $5 a day. It's going to go into review, and then it's either going to be approved or not. If it gets disapproved, maybe there's something in your ad copy that they didn't like, or maybe there's something in the picture or the video that they didn't like. Okay. Now, once it's been approved, you can go... Um, back to continue. You can press continue and it'll take you to the actual ad where you can look at the reports for it. Okay, so it's waiting. It's showing me right here that it's waiting and pretty soon it'll be good. So over here, it's going to show me, I can go see my post right now. I can go see what it looks like. It's going to show me how much I'm spent. So I get some, I get some stuff here and I can create a rule if I want to. Um, <clears throat> I could say, you know, I could create a rule. I don't want to get into this advanced, but I can create a rule that basically says like to turn it off if if it doesn't perform well. That's kind of more intermediate or advanced. I do use rules, you guys, um, just so you know, but I am more intermediate or advanced. Um, and here's the information about it. It's got, my, it's got my ad set name there so I can, learn, I can look at it and see it. It's pending review. Um, it's gonna show me my results. So over here, it's gonna show me like I've spent $5 today and I've got, you know, how much is it costing me per, um, per result. So, It'll eventually be like, oh, you're getting video views for a penny each. And that's going to tell me if I should keep letting it go or not. Now, the reason I do it to ongoing is because when an ad is performing well, I don't want to stop it. So I want to leave everything ongoing. I could always just go in here. If I don't want to run this anymore, I just click this blue button right there and it pauses it. Or I click this and I can basically like turn it off or delete it. Okay. And if it's going very, very well, I'll click this and I'll duplicate it. I'll go and I'll duplicate ads. Okay, we'll do that on another time though. Okay, so that's what it is. Basically, I'm going in, I placed an ad to a video for $5 a day, and let's see, let's see if that video gets some views. So we'll keep an eye on that video, and we'll see if the, if the views start boosting up at all, and it's only $5. Worst case, it's not that bad. So there's only so much you're going to learn in a couple hours, right? Facebook ads took me weeks to learn, but you're getting a fast track. You're learning a lot really fast, you can go back and watch this again, watch it two or three times if you need to. You know, most of the time you have to pay thousands of dollars to get information like this. I hope you find value that you're getting it here inside of the entrepreneur, uh, inside of not just the entrepreneur club, but the 90 day challenge. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, let me go to the 90 day challenge group and let me summarize this so I can get off and get to my next appointment. I don't want to be late. I have a dentist appointment right now I'm about to be late for um, to get my Invisalign. Okay, so... Facebook pixel, why is Facebook pixel so important? Don't worry about that. I, I made my first 
you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars without a Facebook pixel. Get to that when the time comes. Right now, just learn how to run ads. That's what you want to, right now, you guys just need to be learning how to run ads. All right, guys, I got to run out of here. I don't want to be late to the dentist. Um, I always read the comments. Like, I get in the car right now and read the comments. Blown away. Thank you so much. You're the best. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to be reading the comments right now, and we'll go from there, okay? It's been a pleasure being able to share with you guys. I look forward to seeing you. And it's not going to be me every single week. And also, they're not going to be that. It's, they're not always going to be this long. Sometimes they'll be like 30-minute trainings. It's just right now, in the beginning, I just want to flood so much value, okay? You guys, if you guys have questions, like Nazar has a question. If you guys have questions, here's how you ask them. Go to the discussion tab and ask your question here. You know, you would go, Facebook ads question, okay? Like that, and then blah, 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 okay? That's where you want to ask your question. Type in the word Facebook ads question, and then ask your question like, um, what is the difference, blah, 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 okay? The, just do something like this. Ask it as its own. If you ask it right now in the, in the comments of this live stream, it's going to get lost. There's thousands of comments, right? So it's going to get lost. So you got to go in here as a new post. Write it as a new post. Someone in the community will help you. I won't have the time to answer all these personally, but somebody in the community, if you ask it, someone in the community will help you, okay? So with that being said, uh, it's been my pleasure. I always love sharing with you guys. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next live stream. Take care.